Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's and Mariana's Coffee. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A special House panel reaffirms their votes and finds boost marketers with multiple counts possible for prosecution. Also tonight, the Cinemice Cancer Doctor introduces a new technology that helps with chemo. And CUC has multiple applicants for their financial expert position. Here on KSPN, we will continue the Kumano Koro series. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Marianne's coffee. Come join me for a cup. I think you would be really happy. Shizuru? A Kazuki? Could, Could this be, be a date? date? Ah. <laughs> Go for <laughs> it! Try new McDonald's sauce now. Now? Huh? The race to McDonald's is on! No! No! I, I will win! win! Yes. Welcome! Welcome. I guess, guess we, we both, both win. win. Try new savory chili McDonald's mm. sauce only at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Go! <laughs> The Special Committee on Federal Assistance and Disaster-Related Funding voted today to find Robert Travilla and Selena Sapp with two counts of contempt and one count of perjury. Representatives Marissa Flores, Diego Camacho, Blas Atau, Angelo Camacho, Edwin Propes, and Ralph Yumo voted yes for the three motions. Representatives John Posablon, Vincent Camacho, and Vincent O'Don were excused. First is contempt for failure to respond to investigatory questions. Second, uh, contempt for not providing uh, the you know, chat messages, uh, which violates the subpoena duces tecum. And lastly, um, the third one uh, is perjury um, for not providing um, the the chat uh, to the, the members. And so... We, the committee can't, you know, complete its investigation and it's very difficult uh, and that's why the uh, charges were made. Travilla and Sapp appeared before the House panel last week and refused to answer any questions relating to the boost program. The two invoked their Fifth Amendment right and only answered questions that pertain to their educational and career background. Travilla and Sapp are the owners of Nonstop Corporation and was hired by the Taurus administration to market the Boost program. The Boost program was intended to provide funding to businesses struggling from the economic effects of COVID-19. However, the special house panel is currently investigating possible insider payments and mishandling of funds. 
They say a significant amount of the money went into marketing alone. A document obtained by the special committee reveals that nonstop was paid over $300,000 for three months of marketing service. Joining Travilla and SAP in marketing the Boost program is Royal Soyo's Shane Villanueva. House Speaker Edmund Villagomez sent a certification of letter of contempt to Attorney General Edward Mani Busan on Friday. In his letter, Villagomez states that Mr. Villanueva is clearly in contempt as he has refused to answer any questions posed by the committee, regardless of the questions' incriminatory nature. I hereby certify this statement of contempt to your office of the Attorney general for the purpose of prosecuting Mr. Villanueva in the Commonwealth Trial Court. Being a cancer doctor here, we treat many of our patients who have cancer with cancer chemotherapy. And sometimes uh, chemotherapy makes somebody lose her hair or his hair, uh, men or women. And that's can be one of the most serious side effects. People hate losing their hair. They can go completely bald and for months while they're getting chemotherapy. Hair tends to grow back, but for a long time you don't have much hair. Some people won't even agree to get chemotherapy. They just don't want to lose their hair. Dr. Peter Brett at the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation introduces a fairly new scalp cooling technology that minimizes hair loss during chemotherapy. It's called a cooling cap, which isn't painful, but really, really cold. And so they put this cap on and it's really cold. What it does is it keeps the chemo from going all the way up there. So the chemo kind of bypasses the scalp and goes to where it's supposed to work on the cancer and just avoids the hair so your hair can stay healthy. The cap is used in three phases pre-medication, during chemo, and post-treatment. First-time patients may get a headache due to the coldness, but over time, they eventually get used to it. According to CHCC nurse Salome Kostru, this technology doesn't guarantee that you won't lose your hair, but it does reduce the thinning, which is already huge. It does help a lot. Uh, we, you know, we have patients that are are very uh, sensitive or very, very mindful of how they look. So, you know, just having a cancer diagnosis is kind of devastating. And then when you go through the treatment, you go through all these changes. Having this, you know, allows the women to not be as, uh, you know, I guess depressed. And they can enjoy and look forward to their treatment. Um, it kind of helps the self-esteem with a lot of our patients. Nurse Angela Figueroa adds, after treatment, hair becomes faster to grow. Not everyone who has cancer here, the community knows that they have. Like others, they're not ready to share it to the world. So being able to keep as much as possible your hair, these people won't ask. They're free to leave as if they don't have it. Because, you know, cancer should not define you, but still, your hair is something. Others may say, Oh, it's just your hair. Why bother? But it is your hair. That's what they say, your crowning glory. So it's, it's helpful. CHCC's Oncology Center currently has two machines and four caps available to all their cancer patients for free. Also currently ongoing is the CARES program, where you can get screened for cancer at no cost. Get you or your loved one screened today. On March 9, 2024, President Joe Biden signed into law the Consolidated Appropriations Act, which includes $12.9 million for the Commonwealth. Congressman Gregorio Kalili Sablon requested the funding for 15 community projects. The money will be distributed to the Department of Public Lands for homestead infrastructure in Asgono, the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation for Carbon Filter Replacement, Storage Tank Remediation, and Danden Sewer Line Projects, the CNMI Court for Security, the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation for MRI Equipment, Medical Supply Warehouse, and Solar Integration, the Rhoda Public Market, 
and four road projects here on Saipan. There are also funds for the airports and the correctional facility. Kilili, through his weekly newsletters, gives thanks to all the agencies who submitted their funding request. He says the quality proposals and their clear impact on improving the lives for people of the Marianas helped him make his case with the U.S. Congress. He adds they are already gearing up to submit community funding requests for fiscal year 2025 in the next few weeks. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. I love Marianne's coffee. Come join me for a cup. I think you would be really happy. Premium office space available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park on Capitol Hill. Upgrade your work-life balance and enjoy a distinctive blend of location and nature with open spaces and ocean views. It's the perfect place for creative professionals who want real results. Call us at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. One of my preceptors once told me is that we practice medicine. We say we practice medicine because we're always learning. And I think it's important to keep that in mind and to know that you're always learning. And seeing how medicine is practiced in different places and how different cultures approach medicine as well, I think is really important to be able to keep that in mind whenever you meet people from different places. If you're able to connect with them, on a cultural and personal level, I think that creates a better understanding of who the person is and a better ability to care for that patient. The Commonwealth Health Center is not just a place to go for care. It's also a teaching ground for incoming Pacific Island medical professionals. Akani Dunn is finishing up school in Hawaii, and part of that program involves spending a month here on the island of Saipan and helping and learning along the way. Our Chris Nelson sat down with Ms. Dunn. What's it been like working in the emergency room here? What have you learned so far? Oh, good question. Um, I've learned a lot. So um, it's interesting being out in Saipan because a lot of the medical conditions that present out here don't present the way that they normally do in the mainland. So, for example, one of the main things that I've learned is strep throat out here will present as just a fever or sometimes a stomach ache. And it's been interesting that for most of our kids that we see, if they're ever sick, we pretty much swab them for a strep throat and it's usually positive. Um, and the reason why we do that is because there's a pretty high incidence of rheumatic fever in Saipan, mostly because strep throat goes undiagnosed. 
Dunn got her undergraduate degree at the University of Hawaii. She will graduate this August and then plans to go into family medicine. She says after her experience on Saipan, this makes the list of places that she would consider working in the future. My first choice would be the Big Island, mostly because there's a pretty severe lack of healthcare providers on the Big Island. Um, but I'm pretty much open to anywhere in Hawaii, and I was actually telling the providers here that I would consider coming back to Saipan as well. It's a really, really great place and also such a need for healthcare providers. And I've always been drawn to more places that need healthcare providers um, where there's a lack of that. Dunn has been busy outside of work as well. She's jumped into local events and culture, recently attended the Pika Festival on Tinian. She's gone beach camping, visited Manigaha Island, and made some new friends. What's it been like from a personal perspective being um, in, in Saipan? What's it been like um, outside of work here? It's been amazing. I've been really pleasantly surprised with how kind people are and how easily I was able to make friends. And People always invite you out to do things or to go on adventures. And I've been able to go around this island and see how beautiful it is. And it's just been amazing. All the people here are so, so kind. And even if they don't know you, they'll point out cool things about the island or invite you to things. And that's been really amazing. It's blown my mind, really. Fernando, you look you look happy. Of course, because I can speak Spanish finally. <laughs> oh, es tan difícil encontrar alguien que hable español acá. Yo solo conozco aquí a una persona que es una japonesa que estuvo en México viviendo. Yeah. Y bueno, ella es muy apasionada de conocer cada español aquí. This couple runs a Spanish restaurant that's pretty special. The wife is from Spain, the husband's Japanese, and they are hoping to welcome more guests in the future. Hola. And with dishes like this, they are on a good path. Grandma's recipe is waiting for you on the Kumano Kodo. Homemade rice that grandma and grandpa do at home. Olivia is hiking with us, and she knows a little bit about mixed marriages. She was born to a Japanese mother and an American father. She grew up in Japan. This is her first time to do a long walk, and she says it has brought in a host of feelings. I was thinking about uh, old people, they walk the same, same road and um, I was walking like what they're thinking when that time. Olivia says growing up in Japan wasn't always easy in a country that puts such emphasis on the group, looking different was a challenge. I don't look like Japanese, but I'm a totally Japanese inside and I can speak Japanese more than English. Long walks in the same direction with a common goal, spending time on the trail with each other quickly brings us closer together and emotions are shared freely. It's a common bond that makes these types of experiences so special. Olivia says even her grandmother had a hard time accepting her after going through the horrors of World War II. She now has two kids of her own and says it's important to her to prepare them for accepting what they can change and what they can't. I think I have to tell, I have to be honest to them. Like, people can be so mean because you look different. Only that in Japan. And yeah, people gonna tease you like you have a curly hair. Only that, or you have a blonde hair, people are gonna tease you. But, and yeah, you can be what you are. You don't have to be like, I want to be same that 
Japanese, but you're different. You can't. So yeah, I, I want to tell, I want to, yeah, keep talking to them. Hey golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. And for your KSPN weather report, tonight through Wednesday night, breezy tonight and Tuesday, mostly cloudy with isolated showers, northeast winds 20 to 25 miles per hour, becoming east 10 to 15 miles per hour starting Wednesday. Low 74, highs 86, and your chance of showers is at 20%. For your marine forecast, moderate to fresh trade winds will persist through much of the week. Gusts of 25 to 30 knots remain possible Tuesday afternoon as a shear line fragment makes its way across various elevated swells. They will produce seas of 9 to 12 feet starting tonight, making sea conditions hazardous to small craft. High tide will be at 9.05 a.m., followed by a low tide at 4.16 p.m. tomorrow. Sunrise and the sunset are both at 6.27 p.m. in their respective times. <laughs>